My guest today is Rajasa Savant. Rajasa, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Thank you so much. All right, and we call you RJ, right? Yes. Uh, that's, that's what, what I'm going to call you. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> I like you, that. What do you do, RJ? Uh, so I'm a software developer uh, with Microsoft, um, and I'm based out of Redmond, mm -hmm. uh, and I work uh, in an org called Commercial Software Engineering. Um, this is the weirdest coincidence. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so that's the art that I work for, and I deal with mostly serverless technologies um, and uh, sometimes IoT. Oh, let's talk about the word serverless mm -hmm. because I always found that a really confusing word because it implies mm -hmm. that software is running without a server, which isn't quite true, is it? That's right. Uh, so most people get confused with that. Uh, they say they think serverless, uh, which they think it means that there are no servers. Mm -hmm. But guess what? There are. Uh, the only thing uh, what serverless technologies offer you is the, server, the servers are abstracted from you. Okay. So what that means is uh, um, you can have so let's start from the beginning, where initially you used to actually deploy code on servers that you manage. So in that sense, you need to do regular maintenances, mm -hmm. updates, bring the servers, you know, out. Yeah, and we would buy them, we'd put them in a room with mm -hmm. filtered air and install everything on them. Right, uh, the whole works. Uh, with serverless, uh, Azure does that for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not need to worry about where your code is deployed or you know, uh, no need to maintain the servers on which the code is deployed. Uh, you just manage or you just worry about your piece of code. Uh, and that's it. Uh, Azure takes care of where they want to deploy it, and if they want to rotate it out onto another VMs, just to you know clean everything up, uh, they take care of all of that. Okay, so if I can paraphrase, serverless doesn't mean there's no server. It means that we, as the the developer and the user, don't have to worry about the server. It's Correct. somebody else's problem. Correct. In this case, Azure. Correct. All right. Well, tell me some about some of the technologies that are available as serverless mm -hmm. technologies. Uh, so with the Azure Serverless, uh, Azure Serverless has three main offerings. Uh, you have got Azure Functions, that's the most popular. Okay. Um, uh, the competition has something called as Lambda, mm -hmm. uh, which we can refer to as Azure, okay. which we is can, Azure. We can say AWS on this show, it's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, like AWS offers Lambda, yeah. Azure Functions, uh, Azure offers Azure Functions. Yes. Uh, and apart from that, we also have something called as Logic Apps. Uh -huh. And the third thing is Event Grids. So uh, let me uh, break up uh, all these three different things and explain uh, and go in more detail about them. Please. So Azure Functions, uh, as the name states, is essentially just functions. Um, but uh, so what that means is instead of writing down an entire application, mm -hmm. uh, you just need to write down a function that right. will do certain things. So, uh, so a function that you pass something to and get a response back from. All right. Uh, you can uh, so Azure function also provides uh, Azure functions also provides you with something called as triggers and bindings right. uh, triggers as the name suggests is what will invoke a function hmm. uh, so essentially your function can be timer triggered okay, it could be triggered from an event hub uh, which is basically uh, <clears throat> You can say a messaging, uh, you know. Um, messaging bus. Bus, exactly. Okay. Just like service bus. Uh, <clears throat> or um, it could be triggered by uh, an HTTP request uh, and things like that, right? Uh, mm. There are a lot of sure. triggers Message available. Sure, dropped on a queue, for example. Exactly, blob storage. Uh, yeah, I think there are dozens of There are triggers. a lot. Uh, and, and similarly, uh, along with triggers, Azure Functions also offers bindings. What that means is, uh, once your function is triggered, you want the function output to be bound to a certain Azure resource, let's say blob storage. So you, if your function is time triggered, okay. let's say every five minutes, you want your Azure function to store something in a blob storage. Oh. So the output binding will actually uh, help you to store that into the blob storage. The reason, um, <clears throat> so these are like boxed together with the Azure function. The reason why we call them bindings and triggers is because um, as a developer, you are completely, <clears throat> you don't need to uh, worry about the way authentication is done with Azure, Azure Blob Storage, uh, if you're using that as an output binding. Okay. Uh, 
when you add in the code for the binding, uh, you just need to put in two values of, let's say, your blob container and your blob path hmm. uh, and a connection string to your storage, and that's it. Oh, you don't uh, have to write code for this? No. Wow. So the binding uh, in the back end mm -hmm. handles all that for you. Uh, they will take care of all the authentication and everything. You just need to uh, write uh, your, you know, whatever data you want to put in the blob storage, hmm. you just need to write that in the output variable for the binding, and you're done. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So Azure Functions provides you an ease uh, of so, you know. So for simple things, are, are Azure Functions designed for simple tasks? Uh, yes. Um, that's uh, that's one thing that they can be. I mean, they can be used for complex tasks as okay. well. And we could go into more details okay. of that. Uh, well, but let's stick with uh, you, yeah. you talked about uh, some other types of serverless. Uh -huh. Uh, products. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, talk about some of those. So there's Logic Apps. Yeah. Uh, what Logic Apps is, uh, is essentially think about um, during a business uh, need, let's say you write things down as a flowchart, right? Uh, let's say someone requests a ticket, uh, you get an email, uh, then you have to go and do something to resolve that ticket. And once it's resolved, the person who requested for the ticket needs to get an email. Okay. So you can visualize this in a flowchart uh -huh. with yes, no, and you know control logic. Logic apps is essentially that it's flowchart, act, but actually it's something that's implemented. So it's essentially a box, uh, you know, a bulk uh, or a bunch of connectors uh -huh. that you can drag and drop. Okay. Uh, and if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you execute them, they will essentially. Uh, uh, actually do uh, what you envision there. Okay. For example, there is a connector for Microsoft Outlook mm -hmm. uh, in Logic Apps, which will send emails out. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a box, you drag and drop it, and you create a flowchart with some logic of when you want to send out an email, and if you fill out the connector with information about uh, your email address and subject and whatnot, it will send an email uh, based upon where that connector is called in your logic app. So uh, think about it as a, a flowchart, which will actually do things um, in a, as an orchestrator. Okay, yeah, so it's yet another workflow product from Microsoft. Correct. We have a bunch of these. Yes. Uh, in this case, it's one that runs in the cloud. Exactly. And, and you, know, you described the, the Outlook one as an example. Again, we don't have to write code for that, right? We just set some properties. Uh, this That's is, right. This is the message body, this is the subject line, this is the who it's going to, et cetera. Exactly. And, and it, it just takes care of it for us. Yes, and there are more than 200 connectors, even uh. third-party connectors that Logic Apps uh, with Azure offers. Hmm. Uh, so we can connect out to, uh, let's say, Databricks, Azure Storage, um, third-party Twitter, Facebook, so all of these. You can like uh, read from a tweet, and uh, send a message to your phone, uh, giving a notification. So anything, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. There's there are there are a million things that you can do with Logic Apps as well. Um, and the third thing is Event Grid. Okay. Uh, event Grid is fa is a fairly new uh, serverless offering from uh, Azure. What does it do? Uh, as the name suggests, Event Grid manages events. So essentially, what it does is. Um, Think about like a notification system. Uh, so Event Grid can be used to just, uh, if you've got microservices uh, and each of them need to be linked together with certain events, you need to call a certain uh, service when X happens on another service. Okay. Uh, you feed that into an Event Grid and Event Grid will notify the first service that, hey, this event has taken place. So Event Grid essentially is <coughs> Excuse me. Event grid essentially is uh, a queuing system for events or notifications. Okay, I, the, you described that. It sounds like a tool I used a long time ago called "If This Then That." Uh, if, if something happens, then have something else happen. Uh, right. Uh, I've used that. I've used that tool before. Oh, cool. Uh, right. You have used that tool. Uh, yeah, a long time ago. It's uh, have you. It's uh, but it's the same idea. I think it's uh, when an event occurs, when a um, I don't know, a tweet comes in, for example, that uh -huh. has my name in it, uh -huh. and I want to, and then I want to know what people are talking about. Right. Me, so right. I'll uh, I'll then send myself an email. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So event so is the perfect way to kind of uh, notify uh, different, uh, you know, or uh, or queue up the notifications coming in from different resources okay. um, and give you a heads up uh, or and route those events into a certain um, running application. All right, and these, these these aren't separate tools necessarily. You could use them together. They could integrate with each other. Correct. 
Uh, can you give me an example of how we might integrate some of these things together? Sure. So essentially, think about an end-to-end -end data ingestion and streaming solution. Let's think about like a messaging service. Okay. Something like uh, the Facebook Messenger or Google Hangouts or you know uh, or Microsoft Teams. Um, say you are you want to have some messaging conversation uh, on an application. Uh, <clears throat> when a person sends out a message that can get queued up into an event grid. Uh, the event grid will trigger an Azure function, okay. which then processes that message, stores the relevant information, saying that, hey, this message is coming in from uh, David to RJ. And uh, then the Azure function will process, do some pre-processing on that message. <clears throat> Then it will send it out uh, via event hubs, which is basically like a messaging bus, okay. uh, and send it out to a different Azure function uh, based upon, say, say, certain properties of that message. Uh, in the second Azure function, you can have something like, um, you know, sentiment analysis on the on well, the cognitive message that services, cognitive sure. services uh, that you know for that message, and once. Uh, <clears throat> Once uh, you have analyzed that, you can then then have the Azure function store that data into Cosmos DB, Azure SQL, or you know using the bindings. Hmm. Um, that would be a great use. And uh, I I know I've omitted logic apps in this. Uh, logic apps could be uh, something that actually orchestrates this entire process together. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say logic apps is the one that uh, actually puts that data into Event Grid to call the Azure function. So sure. uh, and then finally, Logic Apps will can you know send out an email saying that hey, messaging has started between uh, David and RJ. Oh yeah, or I was thinking that maybe the sentiment analysis you could analyze that, and if it's a positive sentiment, then I would send a thank you note to that oh, yes. person. If it's a negative sentiment, I would probably launch some missiles, mm -hmm. some IoT thing oh. to their house <laughs> to punish them for saying bad things yeah, about yeah, me. Yeah. Something like that. that. There you go. That'd be a good logic yeah, app yeah. application. Uh -huh. This is how my mind thinks. <laughs> Uh, where can people learn more about this serverless tools inside of Azure? Oh, uh, inside of Azure, um, if you l look up Azure documentation, uh -huh. um, there's also, I think... I think that's uh, docs.azure.com, if I remember. Exactly. And I think there is a aka.ms slash serverless. Oh, okay. Mm, I don't need to validate that. Yeah, we will. But yeah, But yeah, that could be another good useful resource. Do you have an online presence? Uh, I do. Uh, my Twitter handle is Rajasa Savant. Okay. Uh, which is my full name. Uh, uh, apart from that, I am still working on creating my own blogs. Uh -huh. uh, so I don't have any published work yet. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that that's me. RJ, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here. Serverless is a great technology to connect with friends.